Good morning, students. It's that time again, time to learn a new tech tool. Today we'll be working with a program called Satori, and Satori is used for online timeline generation. So what you're going to do is to create an, a digital timeline of the major events in ancient Chinese history. So let's go ahead and get started by going to satori.com. Um, you'll find the link inside your quest in 3D Game Lab so that you can get there successfully. You're going to click sign up and then sign up with your Google ID. I'm going to go ahead and log in with Google because I've already set up my account. I really like Sutori because um, it's very easy to use. You don't have to download any pictures and it comes together really easily to share. So your first step would be to create a story. And so here in this program, they refer to a timeline as a story. So once you click that, you're already in the builder where you're going to start putting all of your pieces together. So for the insert title section, I might call it ancient Chinese history. And then I would want to write a short introduction. The introduction can be whatever makes sense to you. I might say ancient China was a very powerful and influential civilization. Um, this timeline shows some of the major events of ancient Chinese history. Perfect, that makes sense. Um, all right, so now it says insert heading. I can put events and time periods, and then I'm ready to start building. So it's really that easy. Um, as I hover over this line, you'll see that there's a plus sign that pops up. So go ahead and click the plus sign. And it's essentially asking, what do we want to add to our timeline? Well, I always like to start by adding an image first. So there's tons of different options, but we're going to go ahead and stick with image because that's something you can get with a free version. So I click image, and then it wants me to either drag an image here click to upload or paste the image. I love the pasting the image feature. So I've already searched on another tab for the image I want to use for the first event on my timeline. So I'm going to go to that image and then click view image so that it gets the, the picture by itself on a website. And I'm gonna copy that URL for that picture. Then I'll go back here and paste the URL and click the blue upload button. That brings the picture right here to my timeline. That's perfect. It's fast, it's easy, and you don't have to download anything. Now where it says add description, this is where I can type about the events. So I might say the Shang Dynasty was the very first ruling dynasty of ancient China. And then I might explain what a dynasty is. A dynasty is a ruling dynasty family in charge of, um, in charge of what? Well, what do rulers usually be in charge of? So I don't want to give you all the answers. Oh my goodness. I'll just do a good job on this first one and then um, hopefully you'll be able to use your own words for the rest. So a dynasty is a ruling family in charge of the, of ancient um, trade, travel, communication, and government functions. Other government functions, perfect. All right, now once I'm done with this, I just click outside of it and it automatically saves, which is really nice. And you'll see that as I come over close to this blue line again, it pops up with another plus sign ready to take my next event. So I can click on that and click image again and the next thing that happens in my timeline is I want to be able to talk about the Zhou Dynasty. So I've already located that image, and again, I just copy and paste the direct link to the picture itself. And then once that image is uploaded, I can add my description and say the Zhou Dynasty was the second dynasty of ancient China. During the Zhou Dynasty, Territory expanded and China grew larger. More farmland was added and more trade was 
possible. Perfect. Now let's say I made a mistake and let's say I actually wanted the Zhou Dynasty to come first. You can use this button right here with the crosshairs to rearrange the order of your timeline events. So you just click on the event and then use the crosshair to reorder the way the events occurred. So this way if you make a mistake you don't have to start over, you don't have to retype everything, you just click and drag and move it around. If you add an event you don't want, you would click this trash can button. Okay, so I'll do one more sample event just to make sure we have it. So I'll go ahead and click the plus sign, click image, and then I have already found an image I like of the time of warring states. So I'll view image just to get the um, URL just for that picture. And I'll come back and paste it. Click the blue upload button and then add the description. The time of warring states occurred after the fall of the Zhou dynasty. It was a time of great conflict and warfare, and civil warfare, I should clarify. All right, so as you keep building all of your different events in order, um, this page will keep expanding, so you don't have to worry about running out of space. And then at the very bottom, it says add conclusion and sources. That's where you can explain where you got your information from, and you can copy and paste the various websites that you used. For example, I can give some image credits here. And I have my Time of Warring States image. Here's the Zhou Dynasty image that I can come back and cite. And then I need the Shang Dynasty image. So definitely bookmark those. Don't get rid of them. Maybe just keep the windows open or copy and paste the addresses as you go. And so I, I've properly cited my images at the bottom. I have all of my events. And then the last thing you do at the top is you add a banner image. The banner image represents the general content of what it is you're going to be talking about. So I really, really like this banner image. I think it looks super cool. And it's going to be clear because I can see the pixel count here on the side. So I'm going to click View Image. And I'm going to copy that and go back to my project, paste the image here, and upload. Then once it's uploaded, I can drag and drop to kind of rearrange how I want this picture to appear. And then I click this blue Save button. And it uploads the image, saves it exactly as I want it. And it says Add Caption or Image Credit. So I would go Image Source, and I would say where... I found that image. All right, so this is how you use Satori. It's super easy. Um, hopefully you feel good about being able to create a Satori project on your own. Um, there is one last important piece of information, and that is how to share it back to me within uh, 3D Game Lab Quest. So what you would do is you'd click this share button right here and it will pop up with several sharing options. And there's just this first option that says share link. You copy the link, and you would go over to 3D Game Lab and paste it into the comment section of your quest. So enjoy Sutori. It's a tool that you can use in the future for other projects as well, not just this quest. So have fun. If you have any questions, try to connect with other students in the room who are working on the same quest. All right. Have a good time. See you in class.